Hello everyone and welcome to the second Stoke on Trent City Archives is moving vlog. So last time round we were in the basement strong rooms of B and C and today we're on the third floor in the strong room known as Store E. Uh, if you've visited the reading room at the City Archives it's actually very very close by to this strong room so this uh, wall here just beyond that wall just sort of kind of over there realistically uh, is the uh, Archives reading room. So yeah, in the last video, um, we said that uh, B and C had a very different personality compared to E, and I hope that's coming across on the video. As you can see, this is the original archive store, so we've got original fixtures and fittings like these wooden uh, roller racking units here. Uh, and yeah, in general, there's a much larger variety of shapes, sizes, and types of archive material in this store when compared to B and C. Uh, there's also more variety in how this material is stored, so we've got open shelves, we've got roller racking, we've got map cabinets and so on. Um, so let's start with these open shelves and the volumes from the Minton archive. As you can see these are all labelled up and ready to consult, but in order to be safely transported uh, across the way, these are going to need to be wrapped and obviously yeah, made safe for transport. And this is where quantity really starts to show up in, in store E, I think is, it's very obvious. As I walk down here and see that all of these are going to need to be taken care of before they can be safely transported to our new facility. So plenty to go at there just on those shelves alone. Uh, another great example of quantity is just back up here. If we look at these uh, now empty uh, black folders here. So these used to contain our pamphlets uh, and volunteers have very kindly come in and helped uh, remove these from these folders and place them into standard brown archive boxes. There are actually some pamphlets still left just down here that I'll show you a little bit later just to show you what these used to look like when they were full. But again when you put those two together you'll, you'll see what I mean about the quantity of work that's involved. So very grateful for our volunteers for helping to, with that. Uh, just past our little uh, card index here and we'll move on to probably this this first bay is actually a really good example of the different types of archive material that we have in store E. So obviously we've got our standard uh, uh, brown archive boxes. This is a really good example also of what I was talking about last time about being more uh, efficient in how we um, uh, shelve our items. You can see here that these shelves were never really designed for items like this and you can see that the space here all at the side and across the top. So that's why our, uh, the new racking that we'll have in the new facility will be much more efficient, allow us to put more uh, items into each bay you know, and be, and be more efficient. Um, so yeah, you've also got wrapped items here. We've got some old grey boxes, as I mentioned in B and C, and then we've got uh, volumes here, uh, some more boxes there. So yeah, that's actually a really good example of just the variety uh, of material we have in E. If I don't have any fancy spinning handles, so if I push uh, these roller racks to unearth the next example, which is some of the mint and pattern books. I think this is a great example again of quantity. So as you can see here that's a whole bay of uh, mint and pattern books. Again all labelled up and ready to be consulted but they will need a lot of uh, work you know, with packaging and being made safe to be transported. So again just the, the quantity of work that's involved there um, is hopefully quite self-evident. So let's just skip down here. There's another probably great example, yep, of all different types of material, different types of storage that will all have to be standardized, collected up, wrapped, that kind of thing to get ready for the move. We go past again, this strong room just like B and C is climate controlled. That's where all the noise is coming from. That's where all the cold air is coming from. So we'll keep moving quickly. Uh, here are the pamphlets I was talking about, so hopefully again this gives you an idea uh, you know, of how much work is involved and as we say you know, how grateful we are for, to our volunteers for helping us out with that. Uh, if I spin around here, there's another example of uh, all different types. We've got uh, volumes, we've got the Bentley slide collection, so those are our slides there. We've got custom boxes, uh, we've got files, 
brown archive boxes or the non-standard storage so yeah a real a real mix uh, we've also got map cabinets um, some of them do actually have maps in so I'll just skip over here here we've got some uh, old ordnance survey maps but we also use them to store some of the large flat material uh, now even a beautiful drawer like this where everything's um, wrapped looks ready to go but again just like in BNC these will need to be then placed in something um, that uh, you know will adequately uh, protect them during transportation obviously at the moment these are very very floppy and they probably need to be put into something a little bit more sturdy so yeah again you know it's a mix of, of sizes and shapes which um, complicate matters a little bit uh, and then if we go down here as well again we've got a map cabinet we've got these items here um, these are again safely stored but will need quite a lot of work to be to be uh, ready to be transported so let's scoot through a bay of Minton pattern books back out onto here and then I will take you down so the store actually has a dog leg right by the noisy climate control machine uh, so if we head down here uh, now this is another really good example of these this is the Adams collection and this this collection actually kind of predates the city archives uh, because of that again it's in non-standard um, boxes they possibly might be non-archival as well so this represents a great opportunity the move to standardize a lot of these boxes and also obviously get them into more appropriate packaging as well if I always push never pull if I move these racks again a couple of bays down I wanted to just highlight a very similar kind of situation to we had in B and C so you see here a very on the face of it neat looking uh, pair of bays but obviously these are all the wrong size archival box these are although these are the right color these are also a different size as well so again very very neat looking but there's still work to be done here to transfer these into standard archival boxing and get those ready to be moved so down here we have some fancy fancy roller racking as you've seen in BNC uh, just a little bit of oversize um, storage here uh, again there's lots of stuff that's packaged beautifully but we'll still need a little bit more work those are aerofilms uh, packages there but they will again need to have a little bit more work done to them uh, till they're ready to be transported and I think if we look across here these are actually uh, loose items from the Minton archive uh, so that's quite a nice <laughs> nice place to finish up actually we started with the Minton shelving and those are the Minton archive loose items so next time round we're going to be looking at some of the other secure areas beginning with uh, the balcony area which is kind of just Again, quite close, uh, close to this door, just sort of out of that door and, and across into the balcony area. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and listening and uh, we'll see you on another tour very, very soon.